Hello people of YouTube, it's Deepak here, and welcome to DCS World 2.7.3 and Eagle Dynamics F16C Viper Module. Welcome to tutorial 12, Air-to-Air -air Gunnery. Today we're going to learn all about how to employ the M61A1 Gatling Gun, which is fitted to the F16, using the EEGS, or the EEGS, because US Air Force people always like to pronounce acronyms like their words. Um, enhanced Envelope Gun Sight. Uh, now this is a gun sight which can be driven by a radar lock, in which case it's very, very accurate and automatic pretty much. You put the thing on the thing and you pull the thing. Uh, it also has a mode where it can operate without radar information uh, and it works a little bit more like a tr more traditional gun sight where you need to ensure that you have the correct wingspan set uh, and then you, you put the wingtips of your target on the edges of the gun funnel which is displayed on the HUD, pull the trigger and all being well you should get hits. Now uh, in the EGS uh, enhanced envelope gun sight. These are described as level 2 operation, which is without a lock, and level 5 operation, which is with a lock. And symbology differs a little bit between these two, so I'm going to demonstrate both. There are multiple other levels, uh, with level 1 being actually basically broken, <laughs> and you get just a bore sight cross. We're not going to cover those because they are not simulated in the sim, and even in real life you're pretty much never going to see these other modes. The only modes that matter are level 2 and level 5, so I'm going to demonstrate those. So, uh, let's get into the aircraft and uh, get set up. Now today we're going to be this is basically the exact same test mission I used for BVR and WVR, except I've swapped out the transport aircraft for MiG-29s. Uh, I've told them not to fire on me, but to act defensively. So this should make it a little bit more interesting. So let's get unpaused. Uh, targets are kind of uh, a decent distance ahead of me, so I'm going to get some speed on. Uh, and before we get the aircraft set up, uh, I'm going to first take a little look at adjusting the funnel. So let's just zoom down on the cockpit here and if we go to list we have an option under 5 called man. If we go to, which I guess is manual, if we go to manual mode this allows us to manually set our gun funnel. Now uh, you should do this when possible, when you know the kind of aircraft you're going to be fighting, um, but it doesn't particularly matter because if you do manage to get a radar lock uh, then you're going to be in business in any case. But I know that I'm fighting MiG-29s today and their wingspan is 36 feet. So I'm going to, I'll take you that from the beginning again. List, 5 for man, enter, 3, 6, press enter, your gun funnel is now calibrated. So even if I don't have a radar lock I'll be able to use the funnel quite accurately. It, it defaults to 33 feet. Honestly, at 33 feet, you're probably still going to be making hits. Uh, I wouldn't worry too much about that. Uh, and now, in order to get set up, we need to make sure Master Arm is on. I already have it on. And we're going to go dogfight switch to dogfight. And of course, once we do that, uh, by default, immediately we have ACM modes and HUD scan with the radar off. Uh, and we have dogfight mode and EGS uh, displayed here. Uh, gun is loaded and ready to fire. So that's that's all the setup there. Uh, and if we take a little look at the HUD, I'm going to very quickly go over the symbology that we have here. Uh, no rad, because the radar is off. We have the bore sight cross. So basically, if we were so close to an enemy that they were practically touching the nose of the aircraft, we would just put this cross on the target and pull the trigger. This is where the gun is aimed. We now have the funnel. Of course, because I'm not manoeuvring, the funnel is pretty flat. But you'll see, as I maneuver the aircraft, the funnel is spreading out. Uh, and this is the, the level 2 operation without a radar lock. So in this mode, uh, the very bottom of the funnel, the skinniest part of the funnel, represents 2,500 feet or 3,000 feet, depending upon the altitude we're flying at. And the very top, the widest part of the funnel, is 600 feet. Um, so you can roughly gauge the range to the target using that. Um, yes, we then have this uh, artificial horizon that you can see, uh, and the lines on either side represent the horizon. As I pull the nose up, it gets smaller to represent that I'm going up, and as I pull the nose down, it gets wider to show that I'm going down. So this is a really good way of visualizing uh, what the aircraft is doing. Master arm is armed, master mode is dogfight, 
bullseye position. And then here we're going to be getting range and closure rate once we have a lock. So let's activate the radar. I'm going to go TMS forward to get bore sight mode and immediately I have a lock. Okay, so before we proceed, let's pause very quickly and take a little look at the new symbology that we have here. Um, so we still have the gun funnel, uh, but we have some additional marks here. We have a plus and a minus marked on the funnel now. So the plus is the 1G pipper. So if the aircraft that we are targeting is not maneuvering, uh, we can put that plus on the target and pull the trigger if we're within range and we should expect a hit. The minus down here is the 9G pipper. So if the target is pulling a maximum G maneuver, we could put that on the target and pull the trigger if we're in range and uh, they will be hit. Now, these are kind of backup markers because usually once you're in range, there's going to be a circle in between these two, uh, which will match the target's current range and current maneuvering profile. And the circuit is called the Eags Pipper. So basically, you wait until you get the circle, you put the circle on the target, give the trigger a squeeze, and you're fairly likely to make hits. Uh, other symbology that we have here on the uh, on the circle around the target, we have the aspect, this little triangle here. If the triangle is at the bottom, the target is cold or flying away from us. If the triangle is at the top, the target is hot or head on with us. And then, of course, it could be flanking left or right. This little line on the inside of the circle is a range indication. So while you're kind of out of range, so that is out with 1,200 feet, uh, it's just going to represent the uh, remaining amount, ugh, what would you say, the decimal point after the current range in nautical miles. So you can see here that currently my target is at 4.3 nautical miles. That's why this... Um, indication is at this position. If I unpause, you're going to see that starting to wind down. As they're at four miles, it'll be at the top position. What we're looking for is for the pipper to transition into the within 1200 feet mode. In the within 1200 feet mode, we're going to get dashes, which will then count down. And once we're getting dashes on the circle, we know that the 12 o'clock position is 1200 feet. The three o'clock position is 3000 feet. Uh, and the three o'clock position is when we're at maximum range for the cannon. So we want it to wind down to here, and then we can start putting the pipper on the target and attacking it. Also note that we have the closure rate here. So you can see I'm actually closing fairly slow. I'm doing that on purpose so that I can take time to actually show you the, uh, the symbology. So I'm just gonna come down towards the target just now. There we go. We can see the pipper unwinding. See the dashes? Uh, so we're at about 9,000 feet now. Now this target's not maneuvering, so this is going to be an easy first shot. But I'm going to do this nice and slow. Approaching range. In range, I've got the circle. Circle in the target, quick squeeze, and boom, he's dead. And he bailed out. Okay, let's uh, unlock and then press TMS right for the HUD lock. And there's another one. Now these guys are spooked. They're going to start maneuvering now, I think. Or not. No, this guy doesn't seem very interested in manoeuvring. Okay. Once again, let's just... Let's see if I can scare him into manoeuvring. No. <laughs> it's actually really difficult to make hits when you're this close. There we go. Boom. That's him hit. Okay. Breaking lock. Oh, now they're maneuvering. Yes, there we go. These guys are maneuvering now. Okay, so I've got still quite a high closure rate. I'm going to try and approach this guy somewhat slowly, uh, and I'm going to see if I can show you a maneuvering shot. Then I'm going to reset, and we will try and do the same thing all over again, but in, mo in level 2. I'm kind of confused as to why they didn't act defensively. I did tell them to, but uh, nonetheless, this is a decent demonstration either way. I'm actually going to break lock from that guy. Uh, I'm going to go after this one. Oop, I pulled too far. I don't think those are the ones I want. I'm looking for the MiGs. 
There we go. That was me in vertical scan, by the way, which is the perfect one for when you're turning. Let's get that closure rate up. Right, this guy is maneuvering now. He seems to have noticed that we're trying to kill him. Yeah, and he's accelerated as well. I'm now in full afterburner and I barely have closure on him. So he is trying to run. That's good. You can see the pipper is now counting down. I only have the plus and the minus, but once I'm in range, I will have the Eeg's Pipper, the circle. Also note, you're probably going to have a really hard time seeing it. There's this thing called the Batter, which is a circle with a dot. Uh, that will only appear after I fire, and that's going to show me where my rounds are passing the aircraft at its current range after I fired. So they're kind of a confirmation. Uh, oh, here we go. He's actually flying straight and level again. Very interesting. Yep, yeah, you saw the Batter momentarily. Right, okay, that seems to have spooked him. He's now flying defensively. I'm now probably going to have a hard time getting him. Also, I've made my field of view very small intentionally so that I can show you guys the HUD symbology. And that is, of course, going to give me a very hard time dogfighting this guy. So you'll need to excuse what will appear to be bad technique. I literally cannot see what I'm doing. <laughs> here we go, here we go. Right, we're almost in range, almost in range. Get barely any closure rate. It seems striking him with a couple of rounds has been enough to make him scared. There we go, got the pipper. This is better, this is a maneuvering shot. Let's see if I can get this. Ugh. Hits. There you go, there you go. That's what it looks like normally. When he's actually trying to defend. Oh, almost got hit by the canopy. Okay, so unlock, dogfight mode off, and that's a demonstration of level 5. Stand by, we'll reset, and I'll show you level 2. Okay, so you rejoin me back in the cockpit. I have reset the scenario, and we're going to have another go. And just for fun this time, I have disabled their rules of engagement, so they will fire on me this time. So let's see how well this goes. So we're going to demonstrate level 2, that is engagement without radar lock. Uh, so for this, I'm going to actually turn the radar into silent mode. Those guys are about 10 miles out. Uh, and I'm going to demonstrate bringing up the EGS uh, gun system without using the dogfight switch. So if I press air-to-air -air mode, by default that's going to be air-to-air -air missile. If I change that master mode to gun, we immediately have pretty much the previous mode that I have already demonstrated, minus the radar this time. I've already adjusted the wingspan to 36 feet, so the funnel is correct. And in this mode, all that I'm looking to do is to place the wingtips of my target on the funnel, uh, and if I pull the trigger at that moment, I should score hits. Now, I think because I've got my radar off, I'll be able to get kind of closer to these guys uh, and fire off a shot before they then notice me and start acting aggressively. Let's see how that goes. So I'm going to accelerate and get a wee bit closer. Oh yeah, I'll just uh, bring that back into the main page. Uh, yeah, I can see them. They're still just flying straight and level. Uh, I've set their difficulty to quite low, but there are four of them, and they are MiG-29s. So um, there's a decent chance that uh, this demonstration will end in failure, but that's okay. This is a deep pack video. We're okay with failure from time to time, and it will be instructional either way. Right, and an easy way to tell when you're getting in range of a MiG-29 is when you can see its smoky exhaust. Uh, these old vodka burners uh, do leave quite a lot of thick black smoke in their wake. I'm going to come out of afterburner because I feel like I'm starting to get in range. Yeah, actually I'm going to chop the throttle and bring out the air brake for now. Yeah, that's us. We're getting there. We're getting there. So I'm going to try squeezing the trigger about here. Oofed. There you go. That's one down. Three to go. And he's already got his radar on me. One of them at least. This guy's starting to maneuver. And you can see as I maneuver, my funnel real. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he's definitely defensive now. My funnel spreads out. He's got his air brake out. Why is he doing that? Oh no! Okay. Well, he played me. Let's try getting this other one. Um, so yeah, 
I just want to maneuver so the tips of my funnel are on his wingtips and then squeeze the trigger. This is a much more difficult mode to use effectively. You saw when I had the proper radar lock EGS system, I just put the circle on them and pulled the trigger. It was pretty much a guaranteed hit. This takes a lot more skill, skill that I maybe don't have. These guys don't have missiles, but they do have their cannon. So especially when you're at range, you just want... Oh, I hit him! That was really good. Uh, you just want short squeezes of the trigger. These guys are now on my six. I can tell because they're actually using their radar. Let's bring it around, see if I can deal with these guys. Now, as before, this is going to be quite difficult for me to deal with because I have no field of view. And I'm not using head tracking. So I'm just going to keep manoeuvring until I see them in front of me. There we go. There we go. There's one. Let's see if I can take him out. So I've already shot down two. That's not too bad. One is on my tail as I chase this one. Let's see if we can make this work. So I need to get the skinny bit of the funnel on him. And squeeze the trigger. We're getting closer. Ooh, 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 ooh. Oh, wow. He knows when I'm behind him and, and deploys his air brake. He's actually making it really hard for me to do this. Alright, let's come back around. Maximum rate turn. Let's see what we can do here. It's entirely possible that I get shot, but that will be entertaining in, e in either case. I do not know where they are. And I'm right. Oh, there we go. One just popped up on the left. I'm running out of speed. Right, he's on the nose, apparently says the RWR, but I cannot see him. Yep, I do not know where they are. Let's have a look around. No, nope, I cannot see them, and when you can't see them, you know that they're on, their, that they're on your tail. That's, uh, that's the way dogfighting works. Okay, in any case, I think that's a perfectly good demonstration. That's probably the best I can do there. Uh, so yeah, with the funnel, simply put the edges of the funnel on your target, squeeze the trigger, and uh, if you've done it all right, they should be dead. Uh, I hope that you all enjoyed that. Please, if you haven't already, subscribe, like, and comment. It's a really big help to me and the channel, and I'll see you all next time.